Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through one of my valuation approaches that I frequently use to value businesses and to determine whether I think a stock is attractively valued or not. So let's jump right into our presentation. So basically what I'm going to share with you today is a so-called exit multiple valuation approach and I'm going to share a five-year exit multiple valuation method with you in this video. And actually I will share the spreadsheet with you for free. You can basically find the download link in the description box down below. But I think it's super important that you actually understand what is going on here, that you actually understand the different inputs needed for this valuation methods so that you can then start valuing businesses independently yourself. So let's take a look at the table of contents. Basically, first of all, I'm going to explain the overall idea of this valuation approach to you. We'll then take a look at the required inputs. There are six inputs in total. And again, I'm going to use a very simple example. I actually use the example of a lemonade stand to make sure that you truly understand what is going on here. We will then take a look at a real business, Airbnb, and try to value Airbnb with this valuation model and then see whether Airbnb as of today is attractively valued. I will then discuss the concept of margin of safety in a little more depth. And then towards the end of the video, I will actually stress why valuing businesses is probably more art than science and what you as an investor have to be aware of. And I think it's absolutely critical to not miss this because playing around with a spreadsheet yourself without understanding what is actually going on here can be super dangerous. So please stay tuned. And then finally, I'll wrap it up with some closing remarks and let's get right into the video. So what's the idea here? As I said, I'm going to use a lemonade stand to illustrate what we as investors are attempting here. So let's assume we look at a lemonade stand and the person running the lemonade stand would come to you and offer you to buy the lemonade stand for $100. How do you now determine whether this is an attractive offer or not? Well, obviously you will have to come up with an idea of what this lemonade stand could be worth in the future. So let's pretend you think the lemonade stand will at some point in the future be worth $120. To determine whether the $100 investment you would have to make today is an attractive investment, you will have to calculate the so-called rate of return, the internal rate of return that is required to get from $100 to $120. And to do that, you will need to be aware of the time frame over which time period will the business grow in value from $100 to $120. So if we, for example, assume that the price will increase from $100 to $120 over a five year time period, then it just becomes a math problem. And we can actually figure out that the rate of return that you are going to generate over this five year time period is going to be 3.71%. And that's basically the idea here. We are going to look at the current price of businesses. We will then determine what that business could be worth at some point in the future. As I said in, at the beginning of the video, we are going to introduce a five-year exit multiple valuation approach. So we will take a look at the potential price in five years time. And we will then determine whether the IRR that we can get by comparing the current price to the possible future price is attractive or not. But let's stick to the lemonade stand example first to explain the various inputs that are needed in this valuation method. So in total, we have six valuation inputs that you will have to plug into the spreadsheet model yourself. We're going to start with the current price and of all of the inputs required, this is probably the most straightforward one because basically you will just have to head to an investing research platform like for example, Ticker to take a look at the current market cap and there you go that's all you need there's no assumption or there are no assumptions that you will have to make on your end so again we are going to assume the current price you could buy the lemonade stand for is 100 dollars then the next inputs are three i will introduce all of them at once because they are all related to the possible future price of our lemonade stand and the three inputs are growth future free cash flow and the future free cash flow multiple that the lemonade stand will trade at. So let's have a look. The current price of $100 can also be expressed by taking a look at the at a valuation multiple. So one valuation multiple we could look at is a so-called 
free cash flow multiple. So how much cash profit does the lemonade stand produce? Here we are just going to assume it's $10 and then we multiply that free cash flow by evaluation multiple. And to arrive at a price of $100, the multiple has to be 10. 10 times $10. Now, similarly, the future price can obviously also be expressed by a multiple. And if the future price is $120, and if free cash flow generated by the laminate stand remains the same, then there will have to be an, a so called expansion of the free cash flow multiple, in this case, 12. So, with that, we have already ticked off two of the three inputs that we need to determine the future price. However, of course, the free cash flow of the business can also grow. As we just said, today there is one lemonade stand and it is generating $10 in free cash flow. But what if in five years time the business will actually expand? Maybe it will add new lemonade stands to the overall business. Let's just assume there will be four lemonade stands. Then of course there will be more free cash flow, $40 in free cash flow in this particular example. If the valuation multiple now stays the same 12 times, well, obviously the future price of the business will be much higher because of course a business that generates $40 in free cash flow is much more valuable than a business that only generates one fourth of that. And as such, we can see that the return that we as investors are going to enjoy is also going to dramatically increase. It's 36.9% compounded annually. Okay, with that, we already ticked off four of the six inputs we need in total. So let's move on. The fifth input is the so-called discount rate, which basically just represents the rate of return that you demand from the investment. So let me explain what this means, because I think at first this concept may be a bit confusing to some of you. So let's get back to the example we used at the beginning of the video. Let's assume we have a lemonade stand that we can purchase for $100. And we are assuming in five years time, we can sell that lemonade stand for $120. As we have shown, this would translate into a return of 3.7%. What if, however, we want a return of 10%? We are not satisfied with the return. Well, that is barely beating inflation. Well, this is where the so-called discount rate comes into play. Basically, with the help of the discount rate, we can figure out what price would we or could we be willing to pay to still end up with a 10% return. Yeah, and in this example here, basically, we would have to demand or we, we would have to negotiate with the seller of the lemonade stand to be able to buy the business for $74 because only then we would end up with a 10% return if our assumptions hold true and if we can sell the business in five years for $120. And this brings us to the last input of this valuation model, the so-called margin of safety. Obviously, we have to make a couple of assumptions to arrive at the future price of the laminate stand of $120 to account for the possibility that we are wrong in some of our assumptions. Maybe the business will generate less in free cash flow. Maybe it will trade at a lower valuation multiple. And obviously some of our other assumptions, the growth rate, for example, could be off too. Well, to account for the possible mistakes that we could make, well, we are going to apply a margin of safety. For example, you could demand a margin of safety of 50%, which basically means that you are not willing to pay more than 50% of $74, which translates to $37. It's basically just like another safety cushion added to your approach. And now with all of this said, we can take a look at the spreadsheet again, which as I said at the beginning, I think can be look, can look quite overwhelming at first, but basically you can find all of the inputs that we have discussed so far in this spreadsheet as well, and I've actually labeled them with the numbers that we have used previously. Now we can now actually take a look at a real life example, and I've decided to take a look at Airbnb. Just a disclaimer, I've actually never done a true deep dive on the company. And obviously in the context of this video, I can't share all of my thinking on Airbnb as a business. All I can say here is that Airbnb is, in my opinion, a fantastic business run by a great management team. And I would love to be a, be a owner 
of this particular business at the right price. However, well, we have to figure out whether we can actually purchase a stake in the business at an attractive price. So let's jump into our spreadsheet and I'm going to walk you through my thinking. You can see my spreadsheet for Airbnb on screen right now. And basically there are a couple of steps that I was taking. Let's start with current free cash flow. So basically I was using Ticker, uh, which is a research, investing research platform. Uh, let's just head to, head to Airbnb. Uh, and what we want to do to find free cash flow is to take a look at the cash flow statement. Ticker actually does uh, calculate that metric for you, so you can find it towards the bottom of the cash flow statement tab. Although to be fair, free cash flow as a metric does not actually appear on the free cash flow statement. So you will actually usually have to calculate it yourself. And what I actually like to do is um, in the free cash flow calculation, where is it? Right here. Calculation provided by Ticker, stock based compensation expenses is still included. So, what I actually like to do is I, I want to subtract stock based compensation as well, which then brings me to this figure, which is the current free cash flow generated by the business. As I said, we have to simplify it. To a large extent here, I think the discussion on Airbnb's free cash flow generation cap capabilities would deserve its own video. I'm just going to illustrate how the spreadsheet works. So if I would actually value Airbnb, I would have to put a lot more work into some of the inputs. Then next one, future free cash flow multiple. I think Airbnb is a superior business. And if we don't want to be super conservative, I think it is reasonable to assume that in the future or in five years, Airbnb might be trading at a free cash flow multiple of 20. Although to be fair, if there are any short term hiccups, it is absolutely possible that Airbnb will trade at a lower multiple. And I think it's important to be aware of that. In terms of growth, um, I was actually just taking a look at the analyst estimates provided by Ticker. Uh, I, actually only looked at the revenue growth estimates, estimates, which as you can see, were in the range of 13% for the next couple of years. Just now I was actually looking at the free cash flow growth, which might be slightly higher, but again, let's be a little more conservative here. So the in inputs I used here are 13% growth in the years one to three, and then growth is going to slow down a little bit in year four and five to 10% a year. What else do we have? So the current market cap, um, basically all you have to do is take a look at the uh, total number of shares outstanding. And based on the number of shares outstanding and the current price per share of Airbnb, you can determine the market capitalization. But again, this metric is also provided by most investing research platforms. So that's the current price. The future price will then be determined by the free cash flow that Airbnb will generate in five years. So in 2028, multiplied by the free cash flow multiple, you can see basically the result right here. So in five years, if our estimates turn out to be true, the business of Airbnb will be available for around $100 billion. And if we now compare the current market cap to the future market cap, we can determine the rate of return that basically an investment that we would make today could generate. And that's 4.16%. We, however, require a return of 10%, which means the price Airbnb is trading at right now is simply not attractive enough enough for us as investors. We would get interested if the total market cap of Airbnb would fall below $62 billion, which would translate into a per share price of $97 a share. But then again, we haven't even applied a margin of safety yet. If we then apply a margin of safety to that fair value per share estimate, then we would actually only be willing to pay $48 and a few cents 
for sure. Yeah, and to wrap it up, just two more thoughts. So first of all, I recommend actually using uh, the diluted number of shares outstanding. And in the instance of Airbnb, you might actually want to take a look at the enterprise value because Airbnb is actually sitting on a net cash position. So to sum it up, again, we can take a look at the lemonade illustration. The current price per share of Airbnb is $128. Based on our assumptions, the future price per share of Airbnb in five years could be $157. However, that's not enough if we demand a rate of return of 10%, because then the business would have to be available for $98 a share. And as we also want to demand a big margin of safety, we would not be willing to pay more than 49% a share. But as I said, we obviously have to simplify things here a lot. I might actually be willing to reduce my margin of safety a little bit because I truly believe in the superior quality of Airbnb as business. But as I said, that discussion would probably deserve its own video. Now, I have a couple of more thoughts on the concept of a margin of safety. So we have just introduced the margin of safety that you can apply by demanding a lower price. But there are other margins of safety that I think it's important to be aware of. As I just said, Business quality, so that's the third bullet point on this slide here, might be another factor. So for super high quality businesses run by great management teams, you might actually be willing to pay, pay up a little bit, pay a slightly higher price, because that quality itself might give you another margin of safety. Then just using conservative inputs will be another margin of safety for you as an investor and obviously a great management team as well. Now, what I will say is that Basically, this valuation model has some limitations. Of course, the total shareholder return basically can be calculated by applying the following formula. And in this model, we are basically only including the growth, in this instance, the growth of free cash flow and the change of the valuation multiple, which could be an expansion, but of course also um, a compression of that multiple. But on top of that, there are two other sources of return. So the impact of buybacks and the return investors are going to enjoy through dividends. And I think it's super important to be aware of that, that this is one limitation and that your total shareholder return may, may, may actually end up higher than it is reflected in this valuation approach. Now, let's get to the part of which I said in the beginning of the video that it's super important not to miss it. I think it's important to understand that valuation is and investing in general is both art and science. As an investor, you have to understand that just because you plug in some numbers into the model, this doesn't mean that this is how the business is going to develop in the real world. Now, those are just estimates. And I think that's very important to understand. I think, especially if you are a new investor, having a valuation spreadsheet makes you feel quite powerful. You can now determine what a business is worth. But as I just said, it's just an estimate of what a business could be worth. You cannot predict the future price of a business with any accuracy. And as I was sharing a five year exit multiple approach, I think it's particularly important to stress and emphasize that especially over shorter time periods, such as five years, the exit multiple alone will be super critical and have a very significant impact on the return that you can expect from that investment. So basically what you have to understand is that in the short run, valuation multiples are going to be a major driver of your stock performance. But over the long term, the impact of the valuation multiple and the expansion or compression of that multiple will become less meaningful. And then over the long term, growth in intrinsic value, which will to a large extent be influenced by revenue growth, will play a more critical role. All right, I think I haven't said it so far, but basically you can find a download link to the spreadsheet in the description box down below. There is a password required to open that document. You can find that too in the description box down below. And before you start playing around with it, I want to raise awareness for the fact that this is just one of many different valuation approaches. And depending on which business you look at, different valuation approaches are going to be more or less suitable. So in my valuation toolkit, I actually have 
nine valuation approaches in total. You can see the other eight on screen right now. And I think it's super important, super critical that you as an investor understand which business we are looking at and which valuation model you should use when trying to determine whether it is a good or a bad investment. If you can successfully do that, I think you have a very good chance of actually achieving very lucrative returns in the stock market and to achieve financial independence. And if you want to get there more quickly, want me to help you improve as an investor, I offer a mentoring program, which basically teaches you a very systematic process that you can then apply to generate those market beating returns. And with that, I'll wrap it up here. Let me know if you enjoyed the video and whether you actually benefit from this spreadsheet. Take care and see you in some of my next videos.